I'm doing a massive tour of Australia, performing everywhere from big cities to tiny outback towns. It's 85 gigs, it's 26,000 kilometers, and I'm doing it all on my motorbike. Throwing research and relevance out the window, allow me to be your ill-informed tour guide to this amazing country. Hang on, motorbikes don't have windows, that doesn't work. On this leg of the journey, I'll be travelling through New South Wales up to Tauri and Newcastle before doubling back to find myself in Canberra. The town of Griffiths now has a reputation for producing fine local wines. It also has no traffic lights. Those two facts are separate. They're not th just because the town has traffic lights doesn't mean that it spoils the wine. Um, but they're the two things, no traffic lights and fine local wines. This is the big landmark in the town. It's a, um, it's a memorial to, uh, to airmen. But when I asked the people at the gig last night why it was there, no one seemed to know. They just thought, oh, there's a big aeroplane up a stick. It's what? It's a memorial. It's a memorial. <laughs> Look at that, desperately trying to find a reason. <laughs> Uh, it's a memorial, isn't it? The, yeah, uh, yeah, and not enough memorials have got spinning parts. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's what more war memorials need, you know? They're just a, like a soldier on the top, just with a motor, so he spins around like that. <laughs> the, uh, wouldn't that be great if you had a big war memorial and there was just like, it just looked like a big bit of stone, and then once an hour on the hour, a soldier popped up. <laughs> <laughs> or there was explosions either side, just a bit... <laughs> like that. And everyone just like, big mannequins going... Hey! Like that. And then just a big neon sign, lest we forget, like... <laughs> but that's probably a bit sick, but... Um... Well, the great thing about this as a memorial is that uh, it doesn't take as much maintenance because when that tree starts to grow too big, it naturally prunes it. Look. In this country, you never know what the weather's going to do next. I find that when you're riding on a motorbike in high winds, it's always best to carry with you a pair of emergency ruby slippers. And then that way, should you get picked up by a twister, you can just click them together and that'll take you back to where you... Well, it'll take you to Kansas, which is a problem. It's slightly off the beaten track there. But these big trucks are nuts because they, they're so long that they sort of, the wind's blowing you to one side, but then they've got a draft as well, so you're kind of getting... You're getting the wind and then the side wind and then nothing and then a quick burst like that. So you go, ooh, ooh, ooh. It's quite tiring. But I've got no choice, because if I don't, I won't make it to the gig, so. When you're caught up in a high windstorm, the best place to shelter from the elements is inside a building containing the Southern Hemisphere's largest playable guitar. This is brilliant, this. I reckon if you're gonna have a dream, if you're gonna set yourself a challenge, if you're gonna do something, why not build the world's second biggest playable guitar? It's great, isn't it? Look at it. It feels like, like standing next to the world's second largest playable guitar. It slightly scares me. Not the actual size of it, just the fact that you get the feeling that a, an angry giant busker is going to come and smash his weird big hands going to come through the thing. And everyone in the area would just be like, hands over there, goes, no! As he plays Ralph McTell's Streets of London.
Located on the Murray River, Albury, next to its sister town of Wodonga, is one of those places that likes to shut early, really early. They clear the streets, but that's very important that they do that because there's a sort of a reverse curfew in place. Everyone must clear the streets to make room for one of the pastimes that they like to indulge in. There's a weird thing going on here. I mean, I know it's it's because the shops are shut, but I arrived and it was like things were just about open and then I turned around, <laughs> the entire town shut. <laughs> like in a second, I went, where the fuck did everyone go? <laughs> just like one bloke just staring like that. Just going, what's he doing here? No, it wasn't just one bloke. What am I talking about? There seems to be, it's a great thing you've laid on and, and well done for, it's obviously the council who've uh, put it in place. But uh, did you know that uh, on, a, it's, on a Saturday night, uh, and I don't know if it's just tonight, if it's once a year, but there seems to be some sort of uh, parade of Bogan motor vehicles. <laughs> that seem, no! It's a... It's a beautiful thing. It's like an old car rally or something, you know, when you get the classic vehicles. Well, this is essentially just bogans in Utes, just driving, <laughs> driving up and down the main street there, just looking suspiciously at men with long hair. I know what this <laughs> Just driving along like this. <laughs> they, uh, they don't seem to speak bogans. They just seem to have some kind of... <laughs> It's, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, I expect the door to open them and for, like, you know, bogan to the waist down and then just ducks for the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised, Dick. That's why they're always revving the cars. When they're driving up and down the street and they're going... Rrr, rrr, it's because they've got webbed feet. <laughs> they're trying to press the accelerator, but they're getting the brake at the same time. And <laughs> you think the suspension's, like, jacked up. It's not. <laughs> it's quite hard to steer with wings. <laughs> they, uh, they have to steer at the end of the... Arrived in Wagga, a town with very low self-esteem, it would appear. <laughs> like, I, mean, well, I asked somebody, right? I said, because I like to have a good look around, I do, you know, and I said to somebody, what's the best thing to do? What should, what's the one thing that, touristy-wise, I should do while I'm in Wagga? And this bloke, honestly, he went, if it was me, drive to Juni. <laughs> I thought, no! That, that, what? That, that, there's people applauding that. Going, yeah, it's great in June. <laughs> no, but everything's fucked, is it? <laughs> I've arrived, it seems, where either everything's broken or is in the process of breaking down. They've got a lovely old bridge here and they can't decide whether to pull it down or leave it up because guess what? It's broken. Personally, I think they should leave it because uh, if we don't preserve, I mean, I'm not saying repair it, I'm just saying leave it, but if we don't have bridges like this, then, you know, uh, how's there gonna be any climax to a car chase, you know? I mean, that's crying out for Burt Reynolds to stop just before it, revving the engine. Oh, woo, 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 woo! Yeah, all your zoo animals escaped! <laughs> Everything's broken! You can't even keep a few animals in the zoo. Here's the way you do it, right? If there's a big storm coming, close the gate. That's all you have to do. Just all these kangaroos go, come on! No wonder you've got that big tank parked in the road. Shit, there's some some lions have got out. So this here is uh, tank presented to the people of Wagga. Uh, 
tastefully presented. Nice bit of uh, brick around the bottom. Nice plaque and everything. Um, the only thing I don't quite get, and I think this is one of the downsides of putting military hardware at the side of the road, uh, is over there is the uh, the Wagga Wagga Base Hospital, which, uh, you know, if you're in the hospital and you try and have a nice relax and recuperate, you look out the window and there's a bloody great gun pointing at you. And the other thing that's slightly confusing is the fact there's a big cannon here and then just over the way, there's a place over here called Hospital at Home. Hospital at Home! And get a couple of old people there. It's hospital at home! And it does a bloody good job. <laughs> no, they do. It says Hospital at Home, and then you, you sort of, you drive down the road, and that's there, and then what's in front of the shop? Bloody big tank! <laughs> I went, Jesus Christ, <laughs> do old people really need a fully operational tank? Surely a walking frame would do, or one of them little mobility scooters, you know. I'm just off to the shops, Reg. I'll be back in 20 minutes. <laughs> Mind you, I, I did go into there, and uh, it was brilliant. I walk in, and I just went, can I have a go on one of your uh, mobility scooters? And the last in the shop went, yeah, all right, then. I'll have a go. Oh, they got some zip on them, these. Jesus. Did you hear that? It, it even did a wheel spin. Woohoo! This fella walked up to me, right, and he had a big old beard on him, and he just goes, Excuse me, Ross, I just have to tell you, that the Lord Jesus... He is looking after you as you are riding on your motorbike. And, oh. and I went, do I get a discount on the insurance then? And he was genuine, full-on Jesus in it up and that. So what I did was, I thought he was wandering around. So I was down at the beach, right? I walked out into, you know, the shallow bit. <laughs> And also, I'm guessing that when Jesus walked on water, he didn't have to roll the legs of his shorts up <laughs> to get out to the bit that he wanted to walk on and then roll them down and then go, right, here we go. <laughs> oh, dear. So if anyone did think they saw our Lord and Saviour walking on water, it was me. Where's that Jesus man from earlier on? <laughs> I met him uh, down at uh, your, uh, your lagoon. Your broken lagoon! <laughs> Come to the lagoon, it's beautiful, it's awkward, but don't go near it or you'll die! <laughs> mm, <laughs> something else in town that's broken. <laughs> the, uh... Shut up! This is... Sorry about that. <laughs> um, this is the lagoon, the Wagga Lagoon and it's a beautiful bit of wetland where ducks can come and swim and creatures can, you know, live in the water and children can come and play by the side of it. Um, except for the fact that at the moment it's filled with deadly green algae. Harmful algae may be present in this water. Con uh, contact may cause serious harm to humans and animals. Mm. So they're advising uh, no fishing, no dog drinking, uh, no canoeing, swimming, or drinking. I don't know who's drinking out of this. Or, well, I've been a little bit, little bit thirsty this afternoon. I'll just drink straight from a lagoon. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a lovely, lovely bit of wetland that will essentially kill you. Nice. Ow! 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 My feet covered in bloody hands. All I should do is dip them in the water, that'll kill them. That's great, that. Very rarely see turtles swimming around in the wild. But have we learned nothing from history? Turtles in, uh, in toxic environments? Uh, all I'm saying is, give it six months. Give it six months and there'll be no crime in this park, oh no.
The thing I like about doing gigs in Wagga is the blokes down at the local go-kart track are more than happy to stay open all night long. So it's quarter four and uh, we just did, uh, was it 200 lap race? Yeah, that was a 200 lap race. And then now, the guys have changed the track around and we're gonna do uh, um, basically a big loop. <laughs> it's now five past five and uh, We've put the track in a different configuration and uh, we're going to go again. Um, uh, it's, now, <laughs> it's now seven o'clock in the morning and as you can see from the, uh, the fact that the sun's up and um, I've just left the go-kart track and then um, seven, eight, Have I been there for nine hours? Eight hours. Eight hours. So yeah, I've been go karting for eight hours. I haven't had any sleep, and uh, it's time for bed. I think my knees are broken again. The road from Wagga to Wollongong takes you past two brilliant big things. There's the big sheep. The great thing about this building is that if at any point they decide to pull it down, they can go through the rubble and um, make a big jumper. And in the town of Roberton, the big potato. But there's a lot of controversy about this big potato because um, everyone says it looks like a poo. Um, so you be the judge. Big spud, big poo. Either way, um, I now have to ride the last bit in the dark with the possibilities of kangaroos jumping out in front of my bike. And uh, I shouldn't really be standing around, blah, 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 looking at big poos. So I'm going to get on my bike and, uh, and go. See ya. Why is it called Wollongong? Does anyone know? <laughs> Come on, look at that. Oh, shit. We didn't think it was going to be a quiz. <laughs> Come on, you need to know about your heritage. It's Somebody. Mountains by the sea. That's it's what? Mountains by the sea. Mountains by the sea. Woolen, meaning mountain. <laughs> Gong, meaning by the sea. <laughs> no, you've not thought that through, have you? <laughs> Woolen, meaning something of a knitted variety. <laughs> Gong, meaning a massive great big metal thing. What you bang? to signify dinner, you know? It should be, it, the translation should be, knitwear dinner warning. <laughs> yeah, that'd look good on the sign, wouldn't it? Welcome to Wollongong, knitwear dinner warning. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? I don't know. The, uh, is that what it means, mountains by the sea? Yep. Yeah, Aboriginal? Yep. yep. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but we saw those bastards off. Don't you worry about that. Oh, yeah. 
We took the name, we took the land, and we said, thank you very much. We'll have this bit of the beach, you can have the steelworks. There you go. <laughs> All right, then. Oh, what a fine, ex a fine example of Boganus Shoutimus, as the Latins like to say. It had both the peep of the horn, the crappy car, and a... <laughs> perfect, perfect. What a fine example. What a truly fine example. And just made all that much better the fact that it was done directly outside of a religious bookshop. Catholic Supplies, as it's known. What a great name for a religious bookshop that is, Catholic Supplies. Implying that a load of priests are going on some sort of special forces style mission. They're going in there, loading up with holy water. They've got little statues of Padre Pio. They've got uh, picture the Ten Commandments just in ninja throw star shapes. Night vision goggles. So they can, oh, that'll be the sound of a... Let the Lord Jesus be with you, and the car will start. You see, that's why the taxis in this area park outside of Catholic supplies. I'm going to go in and buy a glow-in-the-dark Jesus. Them Christians, they might believe in some crazy fairy stories, but... Ooh. They're doing knick-knack better than anyone. Look at that. I am the Lord Jesus. Hi. See, look, he's even waving at you. Hi there. I'm going to show you the sights of Wollongong. The weird thing about here is, is that this is like the town's up there, beautiful beaches, got a big lighthouse over there and a headland, amazing surf, and then just up there, big crazy industrial nightmare. It's a dump, isn't it? I mean, let's be honest. No, come on. No. Jesus. <laughs> I'm only joking. Listen to you lot. I'm only kidding. It's a dump. Yeah! It's rubbish here. Why? Why would anyone want to live here? No, I must admit, it scared me slightly when I rode into town going, I'll get to the good bit in a minute. Oh, I, I, oh sh sh it's, it's, it's back there. Tari might not be the biggest town in the world, but it does have one of the greatest buildings ever built. Oh, look, this is, this is the secret oyster access. That's where they built the car. Wow. Oh, wow, look at this. Oh. oh, yeah. That's perfect. Big console there, right there. Ah, gentlemen, you have arrived. Welcome to my oyster domain. Fire the lasers. One thing you've got to know about me, right? I love big things, right? Oh, I love the big... No, I do. I don't... Don't go... Oh, oh he's an English dickhead. <laughs> he's an English dickhead who's been suckered in by a love of roadside nonsense. <laughs> no, but you know what I love about Jory? Is you've got a big oyster. <laughs> Somebody's gone to the effort of building a big oyster. But it's a car showroom underneath. That's 
that's what I like to see, cos normally a big oyster, I'm just guessing, would be on top of a seafood restaurant. <laughs> or, how should I put this, something that was in some way connected with seafood. <laughs> It's not even like the bloke that owns the place is called Barry Oyster, you know? <laughs> Hi there, I'm Barry Oyster, and welcome to Oyster Cars. I'll sell you one of the finest used cars you can possibly imagine. And while you're here, Barry Oyster's cars, the world is your oyster. <laughs> At Barry Oyster's used vehicle, everyone's a pearl, just open up the thing and... It's just a car showroom with a big fuck off voice on it. <laughs> I'm off to uh, Max FM. Hopefully, these people will be up for a laugh and they won't be. So, hey, how'd you get into comedy? I was on Max FM earlier on, and to be honest with you, it was odd. <laughs> no, I went down there. They said, come, and I went, and I, you know, to, and, to, and it was very nice people, lovely people. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm going to be reading out the, um, the community uh, announcements. No, but the, as we said, read out the announcement, right? Thinking it would be something like the Bowls Club or, oh, the Scouts are having a, a jamboree and you might like to go along. You know what it was? The local Rotary Club are running some kind of bowel screening exercise. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not mucking around. But yes, the Rotary Club will be running a bowel scan programme for the 20th year. Uh, it will commence on Saturday, uh, the 3rd of March, and will be in shopping... I shouldn't be laughing. This is a serious subject. It is, actually. It will be right. in shopping centres and some pharmacies. They, well, it, look at your arse in the street. <laughs> <laughs> and then... and then, No, seriously, the Rotary Club are checking people's bums. <laughs> checking their bowels, right? Normally, Rotary Clubs, you know, raise money for charity. They don't go around with rubber gloves on, feeling people up and that. They go, ooh, blimey. And then it's had a list of all the people, like the amount of polyps, arse polyps, that they'd discovered since they started. It was like a tot, like, how are they, what is going on outside the headquarters? Have they got like, like, you know those thermometers that they have when you're raising money? Have they got like a big bum like that with, with all the polyps on it like that? And I started reading it, I hadn't even checked before I read it, and he's went, can you just read this out? Yes, the local Rotary Club will be screening people's... What the? <laughs> OK, arse polyps, you say. You know. Well, that is... The Rotary Club can't complain <laughs> about that, surely. A little bit of arse cancer-related humour. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, amazing. I just stopped to fill up with fuel, and uh, the service station is an Ayers Rock. Uluru, the most sacred of uh, sites for the Aboriginal people. And what better way of capturing the true spiritual nature of such a majestic landmark than to render it above uh, a gas station, you know? You can walk in, you can buy an ice cream, some fizzy pop, you know? Maybe it's a pornographic magazine. Does the real one have that? No, it doesn't. Sometimes man can improve on nature, and I think we've learned from this that the one thing lacking in large geographical landmarks is the ability to open them up and use the inside for convenient shopping. Newcastle, or as I like to call it, the city of plagiarism. Um, what with them nicking all of the place names from my hometown. But let's not dwell on that now. Um, I asked the woman in the hotel uh, what the best thing to look at in the town was, and um, she directed me to uh, one of the more unusual sites that a city could put up. Um, have a look. What 
what's the big penis for, out of interest? <laughs> what? I, do, I don't want an answer now, of this. <laughs> and if you have to ask, I don't. <laughs> the, uh, no, is it like an, uh, is it an observation tower? Or... It's for the Queen's Jesus. <laughs> The saucy monarch. <laughs> it was for the Queen's visit. What, Her Majesty the Queen or just the local Queen? <laughs> oh, that's the pink tower. <laughs> oh, they've done well there, haven't they? You're just showing off now. What? So somebody thought Her Majesty the Queen is visiting the wonderful city of Newcastle. <laughs> Better build a big cock. What the hell? Did she comment on it? Imagine if no one had noticed till she came into town, just waving like that. I see. Look at that. What a marvellous structure. It looks like a big penis. <laughs> yes, it does, rather. It looks like quite a massive knob. <laughs> one really does quite like it. Mm hmm. The, uh, it was to, when did the Queen visit then? Just before the knob went off, I'm guessing. <laughs> no, it went off after, obviously. The, um, like, they were to, uh, the, no, 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 stop it! <laughs> That's not physically possible. That'd be amazing, though, wouldn't it, if there was just a big pile of builders' rubble and the Queen appeared and the whole thing just... <laughs> And whenever the Queen leaves town, it just goes droopy again. That's much better than having the flag at half-mast, isn't it? They should have that on Buckingham Palace. You know, like, if she's at home, if the flag's at full-mast, they should just have a large penis on the roof of Buckingham Palace. And when it's flopping like that, Her Majesty is not at home. And then when she's in... Like that. <laughs> You could get two of our sentries, you know, with their busbies, to stand underneath it like big hairy balls. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone too far again. The, um, no, so the Queen visited here, did she? When did she visit then? When was that? The 80s. Boy, <laughs> that's better. You're so non-specific about everything. I think the Queen visited in the 80s, maybe. Mm, what makes you think that? She was wearing leg warmers. <laughs> she... <laughs> she was wearing leg warmers and she had a sweatband on. <laughs> Instead of a fanfare. <laughs> They had those keyboards that are like guitars. <laughs> yeah, all of our all of our soldiers instead of marching like that, they all march like that. Is this building obviously is uh, that's when it's um, that's when it's fully erected. But uh, what you'll find is over here there's uh, a smaller version, and uh, what you do is this is actually you just start fondling this, and then uh, you know give it a couple of minutes, and it ends up as that. Yeah, that's why it has to be fenced off to uh, you know. Protects against local slots. <laughs> the reason everything looks like it's been hit by an earthquake around here is because uh, a few years ago. It was hit with an earthquake, and they just haven't really been asked to build it back again. No, oh, they had time to put a big cock in, though. But there again, who doesn't have time? <laughs> oh, what am I saying? This gives you an idea of how dry it is at the moment. This is a lake. <laughs> I'm 
me doing me romantic walk out across the lake and it's <laughs> the clay is just hardened to my feet. I think what I'll do is I'll just I'll let it I'll let it harden and then <laughs> You put so we're after W, you put so we're after O, we're after R, and it's the way we go. You put so we're after N, you put so we're after E. Canberra, a purpose-built city, the capital of Australia, and twinned with Beijing. Apparently, if Beijing feels pain, Canberra feels it too. So that's Canberra down there. That's where I'm doing my gig tonight. Well, I say that's Canberra down there. But I don't know. There's a bunch of buildings in the distance. Uh, Canberra could be that way. But for the sake of argument, we'll say that. That's, and that, that's where my gig is tonight. And um, it's a strange place, Canberra, because it's kind of um, uh, the people are uh, are great and really excitable and, and up for it. And uh, but the place itself is a little bit. What's the best way of putting it? Lacking in pizzazz. But that's because it's where all the politicians hang out. <laughs> so this is the great thing that I love about this building, is the fact that this is actually the roof going up here with, uh, with all grass on top of it, which is brilliant. Which is a bit odd, like the first time I saw this, I thought that, uh, I thought that Australia was run by hobbits. Because I went up there today, right, up to the parliament there, uh, or as I like to call it, Bilbo's house. <laughs> the, um... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with its lovely bit of grass over the top there. Out the back, they've got circular doors. <laughs> Wizards emerging from out. Well, I'll see you next time, Bilbo. <laughs> Well, that's politicians for you, you know. In fact, I'm currently standing on a politician mound, and what happens is, is that the um, the, the parliament's down there, and then because it's built into the side of a hill, they finish work and they burrow out, and uh, they make a mound such as this. Right now, the defence minister is underneath my feet, nude. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to go there and just sneak in with a big bag of moles and just <laughs> stand on the roof and just drop them like that. And then they'd start burrowing down like that. And then they'd be in, you know, Prime Minister would be there and they'd go, Mr. Prime Minister, I'd like to ask you a... <laughs> oh, they appear to be have hit by a mole. <laughs> you know, because they'd bury through the... The, you see, they burrow through the roof, falling down on the politicians. You see, they don't have to be moles, they could be any other burrowing creatures. Moles, uh, rabbits might do. Um, thank you very much over there. I can't help feeling that the badger isn't indigenous to this country. I couldn't actually release badgers into the environment without causing problems. But thanks for your help. Badgers! Hmm, tick. I always travel with my own ranger who, sh who shouts out suggestions of animals that I'm not sure of. With the front here and the inside, they've just used tons and tons of marble, you know, which a lot of people think looks classy, but to be honest with you... It's like the most expensive public toilet I've ever seen in my life. I love the signs that they've got over here for Parliament. Look, this is the dress code. Minimum dress code, shirt, shorts and footwear. So essentially what they're saying is you're not allowed in if you're nude. Is anyone walking in there completely naked? Right then, I've heard it's made of marble. It's very hot outside. Do you mind if I rest my plums on there? I like that big thing on the top, that's good. You know, with a big spike and stuff. And the flag up the top there, apparently they have to repair it every couple of weeks. They're like $60,000 each, you know? And uh, 
I reckon what they should do is they should just put a big chicken on it and have it as a rotisserie, you know? And there's a police ute is about to pull up and tell me off. <laughs> That's proper Aussie, that. Instead of having regular, uh, regular cars driving around, they've got a security ute. Perfect. Is that really the fastest response vehicle you could possibly get? All it needs is a terrace on a moped, and this, they're knackered. How are you going there, guys? Not too shabby. Well, let me stop filming for a sec. There you go. Did you see that? Are we allowed to film now? No, we have to stop now. But he told us off and then rode off, rode into the other bloke, and then pulled a wheelie to cover his tracks. And we were filming, and a fella come up on a little push bike, and he went, you can't film here. You can't, no, nah, that's against the law. It, you might be a terrorist. And I'm thinking, have a look, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, you get a lot of long-haired hippie terrorists trying to attack buildings with a video camera. <laughs> you know, a little bloke on his push bike like that, you can't film here, it's not allowed. I thought, blind me there, the whole place is being secured by the BMX bandits. <laughs> you know. Little ginger kid's gonna come out like that. Quickly, I found a way to get away. <laughs> so Mount, Mount Panorama Racetrack, uh, the greatest public road in existence. <laughs>